one. This podcast may contain spoilers for whatever TV show or movie is mentioned. Please listen at your own discretion. Welcome to viewers and others. Yo, what's going on? I am Scoots Bronson. And I am S. Foster. That's right, and you're now tuned in to another episode of the Viewers Anonymous podcast where we give you our very own reviews and takes of movies and TV straight out of Hollywood. What's going on with you, my guy? Man, you know, just maintaining out here, man, trying to survive, you know, coming off of a, well, it, it wasn't a three-day weekend for me, mm-hmm. but, you know what I'm saying, I got my, I got two days, so I, had, I had to work my extra day this uh, past weekend, but, yeah. you know what I'm saying, it's just uh, just out here surviving, man. You know, threw, threw a little something on the grill for me and the boys. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? A couple of steaks, a couple of burgers. I ain't do nothing big. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, man, just trying to uh, trying to live out here, man. Do this thing that we call life, man. How you feeling? Though? Everything good with you? Man, uh, so I enjoyed myself all too well. Um, I had a <laughs> uh, five-day weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I was just playing, man. Nah, uh, I man, I enjoyed my holiday, man. Uh, I did the same thing. Got on the grill, um, burgers, dogs. You know what I'm saying? Threw some seafood on there. Uh, we had some chicken. You know what I'm saying? Some light, man. Um, just enough for the immediate family. Um, and then you know what I'm saying? I had my boys this weekend, like I do every weekend. So I kicked it with them. They had a fucking blast. You know what I'm saying? I pulled out the cornhole game for him. I pulled out the uh the, the ball pong game for him. Uh played a little football with him. You know what I'm saying? We just we chilled out, man. We had a great time. They was out kicking it. They got to stay out super, super late. So, you know, they really love that. And then um we watched a couple movies, you know, nothing major. Just enjoyed the time with my with my uh my guys, man. You know what I'm saying? I I get them all the time, but they usually don't fuck with me. They usually be wanting to play the game. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They have to do their own thing, you know what I'm saying, with the other kids outside. But this time, we actually got a chance to kick it and chill. So it was a it was a great week, man. That's what's up, man. I mean, it was it wasn't for me like it. This was uh, their mom's weekend, so I didn't get them back until Memorial Day. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but I pretty much, I pretty much, man, like you know, other than working. Other than working Saturday, man, I was shit, man. I was solo dolo, man. Like I had dropped them off that Friday, so it was just me Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I picked them up Monday midday. You know what I'm saying? Like when I picked them up, stopped at the store, got some steaks, cause I already had some burgers. You know what I'm saying? And whipped up a little something. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, man, I just spent spent the weekend, man, putting in some putting in some new content and like catching up on some shows that, you know what I'm saying? I didn't have a chance to finish. So I was able to, you know what I'm saying? To, to cap off a few shows mm-hmm. this past weekend. So, you know, ready, ready to start some new shit, man, to be honest with you. Like I started this new show you were telling me about, you know what I'm, yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting into it, man. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm three in right now. And I'm okay. like, okay. okay. Like I see, I see what schools are talking about now. Yeah, I told you that shit good, man. It's, it's one of those, it's like, you know what I'm saying? It, to me, I picture it as being one of them, like, um, one of them shows that's like a kind of the, you know what I'm saying? They got like that mystery appeal to it. Mm-hmm. But it's, you know what I'm saying? It's some drama wrapped up in there. Um, uh, it got the little, you know what I'm saying? The, 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 the good guy, bad guy tone to it. You know what I'm saying? I think old girl though, she's gonna be the one that that kind of blow break, the head break up this whole shit open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what we talking about, y'all? We talking about solo. Uh, no, shallow, shallow. Silo, my bad. Silo, silo. silo yeah. Excuse me. And uh, Apple TV Plus show, man. And just like, and 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 I think that because uh, see, one of the things that really got me to really turn my opinion on her mm-hmm. is when, when she uh, wanted to fix the generator joint. And so they had to shut the power off. And when they first shut the power off, you can see that it's green outside yeah. for, for a quick second. And then it went away. And this one lady saw it. The one lady was like, hold up. Like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. so, <laughs> she didn't say nothing. Yeah. I ain't seen nothing about it yet. But it's just like, yo, 
but it's 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 definitely like I it's it's really I show man because it's like you you think about like this when when the world is gonna quote unquote get too dangerous to be outside you know they always talking about pollution or we talking about uh climate change and mm-hmm. and all of this and it's just like you know the toxins that we taking in is it gonna be a situation where they build this fucking huge ass facilities and just stuff everybody yeah. in it and say that it's too terrible to be outside. Yeah, and so, see, what what I'm interested in finding out about this too is what are they hiding? Why do they, like, what's the what's the purpose of keeping them in the silo? What is, like, is this a, is this an experiment? Is this a, a like, a, a control thing for the government? Like, what's the, what's the purpose of, you know what I'm saying, this whole silo project? Because you well, you seen the up until episode three, so you know by now, like this, all of this shit is a project. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? like because this is what the wife found out. So, um, and shout out to you know what I'm saying Rashida Jones. Um, I forgot mm-hmm. what his name is. Um, mm, mm, I I David something. David Okolowu or Okolowu or something like that. Yeah. But, yeah, he does. He he's been in some stuff, man. He's been in some good movies, but he's he he did a great job, you know what I'm saying? In the small time that he's been in the uh, in the series, um, so did Rashida Jones as well. But yo, I, like they are going to they're going to bust this one open. I can't wait till they do because it's it's so much to um, it's so much to be you know what I'm saying seen and heard about this type of show. Um, I enjoy it just for the fact of, you know, it's it's one of those things where you gotta put you gotta put your phone down. You can't have nothing going on. Mm-hmm. You might have to watch an episode one or two times. Like it's to me, it's that good. Like I haven't seen a good show that had me that locked in since Severance. You know what I'm saying? Like Severance had me in that same capacity to where I had to be paying attention to see what's going on. Um, which I'm, I'm super excited for that to be dropping too. I can't wait for Severance to drop. Uh, that's gonna that's gonna be uh, that's gonna have me glued to the TV, man. Yeah, like I've I've been picking up more on Apple TV Plus, man. You've been trying to get me on it for years, as a matter of fact. But uh, but like I uh, like I finished that Shrinking, so I mm-hmm. knocked that out. Um, I watched all the physical. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, Which I'm watching great, that. Yeah, physical is wild, but it also touches, you know, on that whole thing of like, you know, the, the eating disorder, and you know, what I'm saying, and, and it, shit like it that. It touches a lot to me on mental, uh, mental, mental, health. mental health. Yeah, um, it touches a lot on just health in general. You know what I'm saying? Just the overall aspect of it. You know what I mean? The the addiction too. Yeah, addiction. You know what I'm saying? Just the the health. You know what I'm saying? Of relationships and friendships. Um, you know what I'm saying? The help, the health of um societal. You know what I'm saying? Interactions. Um, you know what I'm saying? Having friends, not having friends. You know what I'm saying? Um, having insecurities. Um, dealing with those type of things for sure. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what I. Yeah, I mean, I feel you on that one, man, because it's it's a lot of things. Like, it's a whole lot deeper than, you know, her just starting to, you know, the whole thing of, like, starting this thing. Um, oh, what is it? Like, uh, what Billy Blanks and all of them motherfuckers did, no, all that type of shit. Aerobics, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, it's, yeah. it's way more than that, man. It, it's And, like, she's trying to do her aerobics thing, and then, like, her husband's trying to run for, like, a few mayor or some shit like that i forget what he was running well at first at first it was just he was starting like a a protest thing and getting the petition and all that and then eventually it streamlined into him trying to run for some type of office i think you're right it was like mayor or something which was weird to begin with but yeah yeah that was crazy yeah and that was that was super weird but like but yeah it's it's a lot that's that's surrounded around that show and like binge eating and mm-hmm. like things like that. But uh like I told you there was a show I started um 
uh, truth be told, you know what I'm saying? And that, that, um, I need to get back to it. I'm still in season one. That's one of those shows where it's just like when I got the time, I jump in on it because like there's a lot of shows that are like appointment TV that I've been watching that I'm starting to finish up on. Mm-hmm. But like, you know what I'm saying? They got Olivia Spencer in it, got Makai Pfeiffer in it, um, got Aaron Paul in it. He's actually acting in this <laughs> after we just saw what we just saw with, <laughs> with Last House on the Left. Yeah. But um, but now nah, it's like the concept of the show is pretty dope. And then plus, I mean, you know, it's involving podcasting and, and things like that. So that also makes it dope as well. But um, Apple TV got some shit on there. I haven't been able to see a lot of the thing that you've been telling me about, like mm-hmm. like C and, you know, Ted Lasso. Like I haven't gotten into all of that stuff yet. To me, C is one of those things that you're going to need time to watch. Ted Lasso, um, that's one of those things that those are – that's one of the shows that you are going to gradually fall in love with because of the, the comedy in it. And then it's also like feel good story too. So like, eventually you'll like that. Like that's one of the things where it'll grow on you. Um, C, C is one of them things that is either you in or you out. I can tell you that right now. I feel you. But so let me ask you, did you hear anything about this? Right. Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, that Jason Sudeikis was engaged with uh, Olivia Wilde or whatever, and so, yeah, none of that. so, so like they had like a bad breakup. Like basically, like she was basically being seen with I forget who she's dating now, or whatever. Mm-hmm. But um, so people were like, I guess people was kind of in the middle about it. But mm-hmm. then like, so Ted Lasso hit, yeah, and so Ted Lasso hit. It's a hit. Everybody loves it, and like so, everybody falls in love with Jason Sudeikis. Absolutely. And so then people started. I don't know, Shit, like you said, yeah. you see, yeah. <laughs> and everybody was like, "Yo, he's Ted Lasso." And they're like, yeah. yeah. I was listening to uh, the Dan Levitard show. They were talking about this, and they was like, "People really think he's Ted Lasso," but like, there's stuff that's swirling around. They was like, "Well, like y'all don't really know him." Like they was like, mm-hmm. "He can't be difficult to deal with." And all types of little shit like that. So like it was some stuff that was coming out about Jason Sudeikis, but I just thought it was funny that people was was started attacking yeah. <laughs> Olivia Wilde for you know what I'm saying stepping out on Jason yeah. Sudeikis because yeah. he's Taylor. That's <laughs> fucking coming. I mean, to be honest with you, you know what I'm saying? Like this is this is what great PR does. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. This is what great um this is what great art does when, you know, you have that um, you, especially when you got those people that's on the fence and they see something like a Ted Lasso. And then, you know, the only, the only connection that you really have with Jason Sudeikis is Ted Lasso then, or maybe even a Saturday night live, you know what I'm saying? Like you actually like this month. Like you, you look at him like, yo, this, this dude seems like he's okay. And so, um, when and then when you got a great PR team who that's what they're using to promote you as a person, especially in a time like this, you know what I'm saying? They seeing you know saying they seeing Ted Lasso get Emmys and all this other shit, and then like the clips that they showing is when like Ted Lasso is like this loving, caring guy about like all these stuck up, snobby British people. And then it's like, God damn, man, Ted Lasso is the man, and so. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Olivia Wilde, she really ain't doing nothing right now, or she don't have nothing to really promote right now. So then it's like, yeah, she is a bitch, huh? Like, she <laughs> in the, like the last thing she was in was like, what, Lazarus Pit? So now everybody... No, like, no, no, no. <laughs> she she did that. Uh, well, she actually, I, I don't know if she directed it or she produced it. Uh, that show I was telling you about, so- I'm Sorry Dear or some shit like that. It was a, a HBO Max joint. Um... I think it's called I'm Sorry, Dear, mm-hmm. or some shit like that. I was telling you about it. It was like basically, um, so it's they're they're in this town. It's 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 kind of similar to that one show. I watched one episode that you told me about. Is it See Tomorrow or Hi Tomorrow? Hello Tomorrow or some shit oh, like that. Hello Tomorrow, yeah. Hello Tomorrow yeah. was amazing. It's it's similar to something like that. So it's like basically like these people are like in this place. And it's like it's like it's based in like the fifties or the sixties or some shit. 
Mm-hmm. And so what ended up happening is like this one, like some people start getting like this feeling of like, yo, like something ain't right. Like I'm, I'm supposed to be here or, you know, some sort of no, shit like that. I know what you're talking about. That's the one where they was, they was like brainwashing them and shit. Well, what it was, was like they were dreaming and didn't know that they was dreaming. Yeah. And it was like this thing, like what they show you at the end of the movie where, so like, so this husband, so like they're living like the, in this world or whatever. And so, like, um, so this one black lady started, like, yo, something ain't right. There's some kind of outside world or something like that. And so they end up basically, like, killing the girl or, you know, just basically getting her out of there because they don't want, like, people's mind yeah. to get fucked up or whatever. Yeah, they, and they, so... Because they in, like, a coma or something, ain't they? It's something like that. It's something <laughs> like that. And it's like they put, like, these things over your eyes and it's mm-hmm. like, and you're, like, dreaming. And, like, not Olivia Wilde, but... Uh, Florence Plug, uh, mm-hmm. Pudge, a girl that played uh, um, Natasha Romanoff's sister, the blonde yeah. chick. Yeah. So she's in it, and like, and it was so crazy because her husband put her in it because mm-hmm. she was a nurse or a doctor or something. I think she was a doctor, and so she's working like mad shifts or whatever. So she like they never get to really see each other, all this type of shit. And mm-hmm. so he was just saying that she's always tired. He he fucking put her in that shit. And then when she figured out that he did that, he was like, yo, you was always tired. And she was like, I don't give a fuck. She was like, I love my job. You gonna put me in this damn fake world because yeah. I was working all the time. Like it, See, it was some now, hello, shit. Now Hello Tomorrow is nothing like that. Hello Tomorrow is is I believe is based in like the 50s and 60s or whatever, but it's in, it's based in like a futuristic version of that time period. And basically, it's about this guy who is, um, he he kind of left his family. And in the midst of leaving his family, his son grows up and his ex-wife ends up, like, dying off or whatever. And he comes to the son, he comes to his son as this salesman who's selling these, quote-unquote, properties on the moon. And basically, um, his son ends up, you know, like he basically gets to relive the moments that he never was able to or live the moments that he was never, never able to have with his son through teaching his son how to sell these properties that are that's on the moon. Well, come to find out none of these properties are on the moon. None of these places are real. None of this stuff is real. This is all made up by this dude who basically end up ended up getting fired from his job and ended up getting kicked out you know what i'm saying uh and, and leaving his family behind and so basically he finds out that this is his dad and he's trying to do like you know what i'm saying like they trying to do whatever they can to pretty much like get shit going but only to find out that they pretty much just been scamming everybody this whole time and um at the end of it all, everybody kind of leave the main character behind and shit like that. And then he basically is in a situation of where he getting set up by his son. And you know what I'm saying? Like he ends up finding this girl who believes in him and she see what the scam is. So she get in with him and it's just, it's a, a whole bunch of different shit, but just the, the whole synopsis of it is basically dude just trying to get back. And, and you know what I'm saying? Like, just get with his son that he wasn't never able to be there for. Um, that's really just the premise of it. But it is a dope ass show though. It's another one of those that I really like. Um, like I said, Severance. I thought Severance was dope. Um, C is a great show. Ted Lasso is a great show. Um, it's a, a silo. It's a couple more on there that I think uh, have some potential. Um, if you want to just get like just a good laugh and just have something playing in the background, um, it's one with Keegan Michael Key and um, uh, what is her name? Is it Leslie? It's not Leslie. Uh, I forget her name every time. But she she was on Saturday Night Live. She also in the Verizon commercials. Um, oh, oh. Uh, uh. It's it ain't Rachel either. It's uh. Wait a minute. Are you are you talking about uh, mixed girl that was in uh, Bridesmaids? 
No, 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 no. That's Rashida Jones. No, no, that's not Rashida Jones. That's uh, uh, she's done one in bridesmaids. Um, yes, she was. No, she wasn't, man. Oh no, you talk about Maya Rudolph. No, 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 no. Yeah. I'm, talking about, I'm not talking about Maya Rudolph. I'm okay, okay. About, um, hold on. Cicely Strong. That's her name. I forget her oh. name every time. But Cicely Strong, she used to be in the SNL. She in the Verizon commercials. She's on um it's it's a show called Schmigadoon. Schmigadoon or something like that. I think that's how you say it. But it got Keegan Michael Key in it. Cicely Strong is in it. Um I believe it's produced by Maya Rudolph. I think that's what oh, it is. Oh, okay. But I know I know Maya Rudolph has something to do with it, but it's but she might she's in a few episodes and shit. But it's 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 Cicely Strong that's in it though. But it's a hilarious show. They got some hilarious moments. Good some some good guest stars. So if it's one like if you just want something to fall asleep to at night, that's a perfect show to watch. It'll definitely get you there. Um, we talked a little bit about Apple TV, man. You know what I'm saying? What's some uh what's a streaming service? You know what I'm saying that we that we haven't really been able to really tap into. This year, because I know we talked a lot about like Max, Netflix, shit like that. Um, what, what's one that you've seen some stuff on that we really haven't got a chance to get into? Well, definitely Hulu. Like Hulu is one of my favorite ones, man. But also like the thing that come with Hulu is like some of the shit might be add-ins. But like, but when it comes to like Hulu, when it as far as like Hulu originals and also like FX, because FX got to deal with Hulu, so anything FX is gonna be on there. And so like you know, obviously we did um, Snowfall and uh, Dave. You know what I'm saying? I think it's one more episode. I think the season finale comes out this week. Um, I haven't watched a Hulu original as of late. Mm-hmm. But um, but that uh, Locksmith movie that I, that I talked that I did a, a, a what we watching on yeah. like that's on Hulu, but like I think that's another streaming service that's that's really really good, and I think it gets slept on, even though um, a Hands May Tale is like really big. Mm-hmm. I, I tried to watch it. It's just I couldn't. I could I couldn't I couldn't get into it really. I'm so with you, bro. I could not get into that so shit, man. You. I got through like three episodes and I was like, what the fuck is the hype about? Like, like dude, I don't get it. I gave it like a season and I was like, yo, I I can't, man. Like I it's like I, I can't I cannot watch this. Like it's just it's just something that I couldn't really get into. Yeah. But man. like but I mean they they hit with some stuff sometimes, but they they killed me with that deep water joint, man. I thought that shit was gonna be so fire. Remember that Ben Affleck movie that came out of Hulu last year, and we both thought that shit was gonna be fire. Um, it was uh it was him and old girl, man. She's like she's blowing up now. She got a new movie, actually on Apple with um, is it Ryan Gosling? Who she got that new movie with? No. No, Chris Pine. Not Chris Pine, the other Chris, Chris Evans. It's like this action movie that just came out on uh on Apple uh on Apple Plus like last week or two weeks ago. I, I know I know what you're talking about. I don't the, know what it's called though. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, that. but the girl, but the girl that sent it, she was in that movie with Ben Affleck. You remember when like the girl was cheating on Ben Affleck and shit, and then he went and killed the dude that um that she was cheating with? Like we both was thought that movie deep was water? Gonna be- yeah, deep water. We both thought that shit was gonna be fire. That shit ended up being trash. Yeah. But like, that's the last movie that I know that it was a Hulu original that, mm-hmm. that I watched. I mean, it wasn't really any good. But but as far as like just just having content on it, mm-hmm. like I, I fuck with Hulu, man. Um, because mainly because of FX though, FX yeah. be FX be driving some shit, but. I I ain't like that last um that last season of uh, America Horror Story though I ain't I ain't uh, really well I ain't I mean, really like, like it. so so with me like Hulu is great because like you can always catch up on your television shows and yeah. so like um I don't know if you ever seen it but Fox had a show called The Cleaning Lady and yeah, you, you talked about that a lot. 
yeah, like fire, fire. Um, ended up catching up on all of that. Watch that. Um, great show. Uh, I was able to binge it with no issues, and you know what I'm saying. Like it's just one of those apps to me that if you like, if you have a show that you like. Or even if you got a show that you want to go back to, you know what I'm saying? Like in binge and everything, like that's what it's for. Like to me, mm-hmm. Hulu is the perfect TV app. There's no better TV app than Hulu because it has the channels and everything on there, but it also has all the content on there as well for you to, you know what I'm saying? For you to go back. Like I remember I was going back and watching Married with Children on Hulu. You know what I'm saying? I was watching Alf on Hulu at one point in time. So. You can always go back and find what you're looking for or, you know what I'm saying, if you missed the show or missed a couple episodes, you know what I'm saying, Hulu is definitely the place for you to go and uh, catch up with that on, for sure. I'm going to tell you one people slipping on. Yeah. Peacock. Yeah. People slipping on yeah. Peacock. Yeah, I agree. Because with with with, they, with the little deals that they're getting, you know, like, like you know, Halloween – Mm-hmm. But that's when it really started with Halloween mm-hmm. Kills. Like Halloween Kills came out in movie theaters and Peacock same day. Yep. So like that's when that shit kind of started. Then they put the set. Then they put the last one on there. And then like I say, um, Megan popped up like mm-hmm. a week or two after after theaters. Um, Cocaine Bear like a week or two after yep. theaters. Um, it, it was another movie. Uh, so they put in a lot of movies. And then they do. I'm gonna tell you something else that they do the smart. They did it with John Wick and they did it with Fast and the Furious. Mm-hmm. When John Wick was in the movies, they put the three John Wick movies on on Peacock. Yes, they do. Like, they now, do that everywhere. Well, so I'm not sure if it's because of Peacock, but they've been doing that everywhere. And like like that, so I like I like I like what they're doing over there. And they got a few originals. Like I really only the only reason I really watched was was that uh that Poker Face. Mm-hmm. I fuck with that poker face. I ended up doing the episode on on a stolen time uh, after I finished that. But like they got a new one out. It looks kinda interesting a little bit. It's called mm-hmm. I think it's called Miss Davis. Um I might jump on this about this lady. Like all I know is like she's dressed up in this nun outfit, kicking ass. Like like she's doing like these missions. I don't really know what the missions are really about, but nah. It's, it's, I don't know. It's, it, 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 you know, it's giving me the vibes of old girl that was the nun in the hunt in the hunter. I was just about to say hunters, yeah, yeah. Like it's giving me that type of vibe. Like they did like a spinoff with just her. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's kind of no, giving me those vibes. Speaking of nuns, um, I heard they were supposed to be doing the sequel to the nun, or is this supposed to be another um, um. Annabelle or something, one of those type movies. No, I, no, I think the Nun Two supposed to be coming at some point. Oh, so it is a sequel. Yeah, it is supposed to be a sequel to oh, uh to shit. the Nun Two, and I think they already got what they're supposed to be doing um uh, with the with the new Conjuring movie. Yeah. So that that's already in um shit. Speaking of nuns, dude, they said uh. Whoopi Goldberg is supposed to be coming back for another sister act. Nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. The time has passed. Yes. yes. <laughs> you can only listen. Like as far as as far as like movies go, like bro, you gotta. If it's to me, I feel like if it's past ten years, you taking a a super fucking risk at doing this. Because first and foremost, you trying to you trying to bring back nostalgia from some shit that really it was big, but it wasn't that big. Like it was big to us. It wasn't big to everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I felt, yeah. So I don't know if that's gonna fly. And also Whoopi Goldberg ain't got the same clout as she did. Um, years and years ago, like yeah, she on TV every day, but that's with like the sixty and up crowd. That ain't with you know what I'm saying the masses who gonna go see a movie. 
I feel you, and I think that's going to take us perfectly into my next uh, thing that I want to talk to you about. So mm-hmm. I was listening to this podcast, and I was like, yo, that's a great conversation to do on here. Mm-hmm. So you bringing up what you just said. I mm-hmm. think that that if they do do this new sister ad, I think it's one of those things where it's going to go straight to a streaming service, right? As it should. Like so, America. Yes. And like so I was listening to this pod and they was talking about and they used Brian, Ryan Reynolds as an example mm-hmm. and they uh, talked about him. What they were talking about, it started out with Quentin Tarantino and it took them into Ryan Reynolds and Martin Scorsese. Mm-hmm. So Quentin Tarantino is upset with how things are going with streaming services and movies and shit like that. Like, you know, he's come from that old school, especially him and Martin Scorsese. You know, Martin is you know, he's he's like, I don't like this all this new streaming shit that's going on. Even though he put the Irishman on Netflix. Yeah, I was about but to say he, he, did, he definitely just did it on Netflix joint. But he but if I'm not mistaken, they released I, it in, in certain in the theaters first. Movie. Yeah. No, so, at the same time. Yeah, I think it was at, and it was select theaters. Yeah. But but it, it was going around that the reason he did that. Well, he did it because it, obviously he wanted it to go to the movies, but at the same time, you can't get any Grammy nods unless it's in the theater. It's in the theater, right. So they were saying that how he don't like this. Fucking stupid. I think it's stupid. If it's good, it's good. I don't think it matters what the fuck you see it at, but exactly. hey. So the conversation was that Quentin Tarantino don't like this new streaming shit, and like he's kind of like holding off on his movie because you know, he said he was only going to do 10 films mm-hmm. and this will be his 10th film the next one that he decides to do or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so he's like upset with streaming, all this type of shit. And Martin is too. Like he's feel like he don't like this whole new format of what's going on. So then they bring up Ryan Reynolds. They was like, Ryan Reynolds got a 50, a 50 million dollar movie deal with Netflix. Mm-hmm. You know, we seen Six Underground. We've seen um um, what's the, when the uh, was it the no, not the gray man? He wasn't in the gray man, no, not the gray man. Um, um he did, um, oh man, we we did the podcast on it when he was, was on, in the past. Stick. I thought um, that was on Amazon, no, that was Netflix. That was Netflix. Um, why is my mind blanking right now? Because we did, we did the damn movie, um, Hold on, we did I got the movie you. on here. Um, he got Red Notice. Yeah, Red Notice. He got the Adam Adam Project. Project. That's yep. what I'm thinking about. And then he got so, Six Underground. Yeah, so he did three Netflix movies. Where he's getting 50 mil a year. Mm-hmm. And so they were saying that, do you think he's mad that he's doing these movies and they're going straight to Netflix or whatever? And they was like, yo, all he cares about the check. But they was like, he don't have that old mindset like a Quentin Tarantino and the Martin Scorsese has. Like, he's just putting out great work. I wouldn't say so, that because if that was the case, he wouldn't do films that go straight to fucking theater. Well, as of late, I mean, so he got the Deadpool movies, mm-hmm. right? Um, he was in Bullet Train, but he wasn't Bullet Train. You know what I'm saying? Bullet Train wasn't really centered around. It was really. Um, yeah, that's true. Uh, what's my man's name? Brad Pitt. Brad, yeah, Brad Pitt. So it's like when you look at like the shit that he got coming out, well, that spirited that was an apple apple joint. Mm-hmm. Let me see, Free Guy. But I felt like Free Guy came out on something. Didn't it come out on like Prime or something? HBO Max. And so, like I said, he got Deadpool. He got the the Hits Man's Wife Bodyguard. Mm-hmm. I don't remember if they hit theaters or not. Yeah, it did. It did okay, and the and the hitman's what was it? The hitman's wife, wife hitman wife, yeah, bodyguard, like, and then it was the hitman's or the wife's the hitman's wife's. It was something else. It was two of them. It was yeah, the it hitman's was bodyguard, and then the hitman's wife's bodyguard. Yes, that's what it was. I think that's so. Like he's doing, doing, he's doing both, but he's doing as of late, he's doing more like Netflix type joints, and so I don't like blame him. I mean, I don't either. I don't either because if, if Netflix is going to cut the check and these are not terrible movies at mm-hmm. all. So it's just like my question to you is like 
how do you feel about how things have shifted to where you got these people who either got deals with Netflix or Prime or Apple mm -hmm. and like so they're giving you these movies that are going straight to these streaming platforms and the old traditional way isn't I, I guess what I'm trying to say is like the old traditional way isn't what people are like necessarily looking for. They're looking for more convenience. Like, mm -hmm. do you like the way how things has kind of shifted? And do you feel that people like Quentin? Well, not really Quentin because he says he's only going to do one more movie. But like mm -hmm. Mark Scorsese, do they need to like get with the times and just be like, yo, like fuck all that other shit. Like just yeah. if you got material that you want to come out, you know what I'm saying? Put it out. I, I I think they need to give it the times. Do I think they will? I doubt it. Um, only because you know how you know how it is with, with certain dudes, man. They have they have some in their mind, then they like the way shit is, and they stick with that, and it is what it is. Um, but I, I love the way things are going. To be honest with you, I mean, if you think about it, like what what better time that we have honestly and i'm not talking about with the podcast i'm not talking about um you know what i'm saying just watching movies for the pod i'm talking about just in general what better time did just america have than when excuse me than when hbo max was releasing the movie every fucking mm -hmm. month on the fucking platform like that's what we look forward to that's what that's the reason we have these apps that's the whole reason why these apps are so easily accessible. And, and, and that's why if you really notice a lot of the stuff that people are talking about is not something that's in the theaters or it's not, you know what I'm saying? Something on TV It's something that's coming from a streaming app. And you know what I'm saying? Um, perfect example is for the longest people, well, not for the longest, but like for the last few weeks, people have been talking about love and death from HBO max. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When when Ted Lasso um, was doing this thing, you know, it was one of the bigger shows. You know what I'm saying? Um, shit. Power, Succession, and all them, people are watching those, not on cable from HBO, but they're watching it on HBO Max or Max now. Um, and that's the, that's the type of thing, you know what I'm saying, that to me, even the, the cable channels are going to apps. You know what I'm saying? Like they're creating their own apps so you can, you know what I'm saying? You can go watch them there and stuff like that because they know that nobody is really watching television. Nobody is really, I mean, don't get me wrong. People are still going to the movies because I myself, I still go to the movies. Um, certain movies you just have to see in that environment. Um, mm -hmm. But for the most part, if you're talking about rewatchability, if you're talking about, something that I'm going to, you know, saying I want to see more than once, then nine times out of 10, I'm going to rewatch it on a streaming app. You know what I'm saying? Or I, I might go to, you know what I'm saying? Voodoo, or I might go to Apple or, um, I'm trying to think what else they got. It's something else. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if you use Android, you got Google play or whatever. Um, but, or Amazon prime, you know what I'm saying? Like any of those to where, you know, if a movie comes out, I can go buy the movie or rent the movie and watch it. But the streaming apps, to me, the convenience, like, like this is the thing. It's all about convenience and everybody is, is paying for convenience. Right. And if I work a certain, uh, you know, what I'm saying set of hours on my job and my wife works a certain set of hours on her job and we're only able to get in at 11 and sit down and watch a movie together with no kids and, and set everything up perfectly. I'm pretty sure that if I go hit up a movie, you know what I'm saying? At the movie theater, we may or may not be able to make that, but I know if I can sit down, we can definitely do a Netflix and chill or, you know what I'm saying? We can do HBO max or we can hit Hulu up and you know what I'm saying? Like those apps are already available for us to be able to, you know what I'm saying? Use them at our own discretion. And to me, that's the beauty of it all. You know, but, it's cool to go to the movies um, and and go see everything. But I mean, do, are you are you really okay? For instance, a movie comes out next week. 
are you really trying to fight for tickets or are you just one of those people who like the rest of America probably is, is nah, just wait till it come out on Netflix or something. But now we're getting the option. Like, I think you could do it. You could do it on prime, but you also like, like one of the places that I use for rent is like voodoo. Yeah. And like, I mean, you can rent a movie that's yeah. in the movies right now. It's just twenty five dollars. It's like, Absolutely. are you willing to pay twenty five dollars? But a lot of times, you got to wait for it to be released on the platform after you do it. Yeah. So, it, yeah, for some of the cases, because I was looking, because yeah. I was actually, because like I said, like this weekend, I was pretty much solo. So I was mm-hmm. looking, and I was like, man, do I really want to pay twenty five dollars to damn rent? Um, uh, I was looking at um. Uh, Evil Dead uh, Rise. Oh, I'm like, yeah, I really yeah, want to yeah, pay twenty five dollars. I got. Like, I, I just think wait. I got something for you where you might not have to do that. We'll talk later. But um, because I was thinking of doing the same thing. Uh, but no, I'm saying like those type of things though. You know, those are the kind of things that you kind of have to look at and be like, mm, you know, you know, or or if you want to do something with your kids, you you know, maybe you want to do a cool night out with your kids. You know what I'm saying? And you, I don't know, you one of them parents who go on Amazon and buy the blow-up screen or whatever and got the projector outside. And y'all having a movie night outside, you know what I'm saying, with all your kids and their friends and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? You want to do that. You don't want to necessarily go and deal with the hassle of going to the movies, paying damn near $100 for tickets, then going and paying another 150 for snacks. And then, you know what I'm saying, the snacks ain't that big. So once you get done with them, you might have to go back to go get snacks. And then you miss the best part of the fucking movie. And it ain't no rewinding it. You know what I'm saying? You can't pause that shit. So, nah, like, the, to me, I never underestimate the power of convenience. The power of convenience will take over everything, no matter what it is, if the majority, you know what I'm saying, says so. Even if the minority says so, it's more than likely to take over because it's convenience, it's easier, it's it's less of a hassle, it's something that's easily attainable, and these streaming apps are just that, they're easily attainable, and I feel like if people really wanted to, or if these apps really wanted to make money, and even, you know what I'm saying, I, I'm, I'm partially against it, but not really, like, even if you, they did like an ESPN Plus model where, you know, you buy the app and then you able to make a small purchase and get this, you know what I'm saying, to be able to watch it. I wouldn't mind that. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not mad at it. Overboard, of course. It, that, that's the thing. Yeah. And like how things are so much about capitalism, it probably mm-hmm. is. But like, man, like, so I see, have you seen the new trailer for the new um, Mark Scorsese movie? Um, was it Killers of the Flower Moon? Have you seen a yeah. uh, trailer for it? Yeah. So it's it's about this uh, indigenous tribe that was uh, it was a member of that family that was murdered, and so like uh, under mysterious circumstances in the 1920s, and you know what I'm saying sparked a major FBI investigation involving J. Edgar Hoover or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you know you got the regular suspects, you got Leonardo DiCaprio, you got you know Robert De Niro, uh, Jesse uh, Plemons. He's starting to be in a he's lot of still, shit, but it got indigenous people in it. Yeah, it got your boy in it though, John Lithgow, mm-hmm. uh, Brandon Fraser. You see, you know, he's making a comeback. I'm sick but, of him, but okay. But I mean, it's not as long as they said. It's three hours and twenty six minutes. But this is the pro. This is not a problem. But this is what I just saw, and I didn't realize this. Mm-hmm. It says it's an Apple original. Now, now, this is my thing. Now, you said you don't want to fu- now. Are you coming along with the time? I'm pretty sure this is going to be in theaters first, or at least is it? Is it a two parter? No, it's one. It's Martin one don't do that. Do. Martin don't do that. Remember, I told you like, I know that. that. My... I'm saying that's that's why I was asking. Is it a two parter? I just wanted to see if he, you know, kind of, you know, broke that. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Depending on the once I see the trailer or find out more about the story, then maybe I'll watch it. Um, but seeing how it is a historical reference movie, more than likely I will watch it based off of that. Um, but I don't, I don't know, man. Sometimes Scorsese's movies just be too drab for me, bro. They, they do. Um, he, he has, he does have an issue with that. 
And and I felt I, I felt like especially when it came to the Irishman, mm -hmm. there was a little place in the middle where you could have fucking like yeah, you ended that shit that and made it out. a second. Yeah, you could have made it a second part to come out a couple months later or whatever. Or just or just chop that some of that middle out. Some of that shit we didn't need. It was a lot of filler in that movie. Yeah, but he don't he don't do Mark. That's one thing about Mark. He do not like cutting shit. You know yeah, that's what, but see, this is what I'm saying. I wouldn't mind it if it meant something for the movie but it was just certain shit that didn't mean nothing for the movie there, yeah he, like he, they was he, adding all the places that they thought that jimmy hoffa would fam if this movie is about the nigga that know where jimmy hoffa is buried <laughs> just tell us where jimmy hoffa is buried not where we think jimmy hoffa is buried that's stupid to even add that in there i mean this you know this saying? is true this is true but like i will say this though like for me, I I like this. Be being a consumer like I am, mm -hmm. yes, I like the way that it's going because I think that if you are an independent, like director or whatever the case may be, there's more places for you to put your shit out there. Yeah. Now there is some issues. I don't know if you've been noticing any of this shit. Like there's a, like a lot of shit going around about like these two B originals. Yo, you want to talk yeah, about Tubi, comedy? I heard Tubi got some some uh, iPhone classics. Yo, I'm talking about you want to talk about comedy? Yo, there's this one with this dude. He's like, <laughs> is it the one where he running and then he fall on the outside? Yeah, I seen that shit on TikTok, bro. Somebody was like, man, they know they dare for keeping the game rolling. I'm like, hey. like the, the way he fell was so like it, it was real as hell, but you could tell like that's, that wasn't in the script. That wasn't supposed to happen at yeah, all. At all. Like, Yo, damn, bro. That's fucking hilarious. that's comedy, but but um that's that's called that is <laughs> Committing to acting because he failed, <laughs> laid there, got up, and continued to run. Yo, that was so funny. Committed but um, but now like I think that we could end up seeing more independent films that way. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, like, there's so when it comes to the old school, it, it's it's just like it's just like when you listen to. NBA players that played in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. They're yeah. like, yo, like we we was the one who started this shit. We the reasons why y'all are getting this much money and this and that and this mm -hmm. and that. And so it's like I, I get the old timers of what they saying. Yeah. But when I was listening to the Dan Levitar show, like Stu Gotts brought up a great point. He was like, you have to evolve with the times. He was like, when we started, he was like, we was on an AM station. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then we worked our way up the FM, then we got the ESPN radio, and now, you know what I'm saying? Now we, our show is a podcast now. Yeah. Like you have to evolve with the time. And I think that all of these directors like Spielberg, Ron Howard, and, you know, I mean, shit, if you really think, I mean, Ever Gary Gray first film came out in 95. So, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I'm not, not, it's not as far back as Scorsese and listening to them but like you know like you just have to evolve with the time and it's like if you can get apple or netflix or prime to to cut you a check you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying you can get that you can get that stuff out there and it's really about when you create this art you want it to be seen no matter how it's being seen if you got paid for it mm -hmm. You know, like now, do they still need to fix the way the streaming dollars are coming to people? Like, yes, like I mean, yes and no. This is my thing, right? Like, that's really the only complaint that these motherfuckers have is the fact that they not getting them the same money that they would get yeah. if it was at a, a theater complex. But this is the thing. You're not making that type of money unless you are a Marvel slash DC film or you were part of some big ass franchise like Fast, Fast, and, Fast Furious and the Furious or Harry Potter yeah. or you know what I'm saying Star Wars or some shit like that like if you are not a part of a franchise or if you are or if you are not a superhero film 
you're just not gonna make the money you think you're gonna make. And I and at this point, for me, I feel like if if that's the case, then put it out on Amazon to where it's, it's you just can't stream it. You gotta buy it. Put it out on you know what I'm saying, Voodoo to where you can't stream it. You gotta buy it. Same thing on Apple and you know what I'm saying? All those other platforms on, on the Google platform and all that. Just put it where you can strictly where you can only strictly buy it. And then let's see how fucking far you get doing that shit. I tell you another one. And I love this dude. Um Christopher Nolan, he's in that lane. But he don't like how a lot of this shit is going right now. And if you remember, he held tenant. He pushed tenant back because tenant was supposed to come out during mm-hmm. the pandemic. And he was like, what? We ain't going to the movies? Fuck that shit. I'll hold it. He was like, I'll wait because the two movies that they held mm-hmm. was Tenet and Top Gun Maverick. Those were the two movies could, that did not fucking come out. Top Gun Maverick. I ain't even gonna lie. I watched Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. It was alright. Okay. It wasn't it wasn't the, the hype that they gave it though. I, I mean I'm not I'm not a big fan of the original Top Gun. Well, see, that's the thing. You're not really, and then also, you probably didn't play the game, which I'm still pissed off for that game because, like, so the Top Gun game was dope was as fuck, playing, right? I was playing the real game, Ace Combat. Nobody was playing <laughs> Top Gun. Hey, I used to play Top Gun, but man, you like, man, you like that. You would do your mission, right? Mm-hmm. And then you had to land the fucking thing back on the um on the ship. Bitch, you crash every time. Man, I crashed every fucking time. <laughs> but R. Um, R. P. Goose, man. Yeah, R. P. Goose, man. But like, but when I tell you they had uh Miles Tiller looking just like that motherfucker, but yeah. that was comedy. But yeah. um, I, I, but, but I, I've never, I've never been a fan of that, bro. Like I, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not really a big fan of uh, uh Tom Cruise. Mission Impossible. No, oh, Tom Cruise is great. Mission Impossible. Man, listen, they need to chill. It's, like, okay, me, it's, what it's the it's the American attempt at James Bond. Okay, what need to stop the most? All right. Fast and miss, fucking miss it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care what you, what you got on that list. Ain't nothing else you can put on that list that's gonna make me think anything otherwise. Fast and fucking fear in that shit. Now don't put nothing, don't put nothing else out. <laughs> <laughs> us out. Don't put no video games out. Don't put no posters out. No TV shows. No T-shirts. No merchandise. No nothing. Just, just once this is done, let it go. Please. It's let not it go. The, They, they already God. said Vin yeah, Diesel. Now said it's supposed to be a spinoff with with a certain female or some shit. I don't know nah, which female is supposed burn to be. Burn that shit down, man. <laughs> That's enough. God dang it. That's ridiculous. How like seriously? How 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 do they find a way to milk the shit? And then it's it's they not even who. I'm getting frustrated, bro. Who <laughs> the writers for Fast and Furious because that job is not hard. That job is not hard. The first thirty minutes ain't nothing but race cars, and then after that, find the most preposterous shit you can think of, and just make sure that Dom survives. And they gotta be able to use a car. So they're gonna drive a car through the zoo. They're gonna drive a car through aquariums. They're gonna find a way to turn cars into boats. They're gonna find a way to do something as long <laughs> as the 30 minutes is is street racing. Yo, it's so funny. No, I just thought it was funny how Dom's supposed to be. Well, first of all, Vin Diesel is it's this whole mysterious thing about what race he is, whatever, right? Yeah, so I then mean, at this point, man, we we know he mixed. He just he, he so, black and white. So in this movie, he's supposed to be I don't know Toretto. What is that? Puerto Rican? I'm not sure. I thought it was Italian. I don't know, man. I, I, but, I listen. I don't know shit about Fast and Furious. I, I thought he was Spanish because he. Was I think it's some kind Letty. of Spanish. He was hanging out with Letty and yeah. him, and then that he then I found out he wasn't. Then I thought he was Italian because his sister, but. I, I ain't even sure what his sister is at this point. Cause she could dude, be at this point, they could be anything. Dude, John Cena is his brother in nine. That's what I'm telling you. They <laughs> can be anything, bro. This, this shit is mind blowing. They can do at this point, they can do whatever they want to in Fast and Furious. This nigga could be half giraffe, all we know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They did a spinoff where this nigga Idris Elba was a robot. 
Hey, that was hard though. And then they brought them niggas right back into the into the Fast and Furious like nothing happened. They they never mentioned the robot man ever. <laughs> no, no. Remember, remember the only person that's connected to Hobbs and Shaw mm-hmm. is um is uh Jason Statham. Now, Jason Statham is the end nine. He's in the end credits, though. So The Rock was in it, too. No, he's not. Remember, The Rock and what's the name is beefing. Rock hasn't been in the Fast and the Furious since uh, Hobbs and Shaw. Nigga, I'm talking about Hobbs and Shaw. They fought Idris Elba. Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, but Ben Diesel so wasn't, they in. wasn't in They wasn't in nine. No. All right. I bet you they be in ten. I don't know if The Rock going to be in there, though. You that shit. He ain't gonna miss out you, on that check. He not gonna they, miss out on that check. And Jason I'm Momoa in there too? Nah, nah. I bet have you, have, you, have you noticed? Have you noticed? Have you noticed what's going on? They just so they started they out with the rock. Niggas, yeah, they start out with the rock. Then they go to John Cena. And then they go to Jason Momoa. All former wrestlers. Yeah. What David Batista? said? He gonna pop up Roman in this bitch somewhere. In there. Roman Reigns was in there. Yeah, there he was in there. So that's what I'm saying. Like they just take it, they just take your wrestlers to fucking fight damn Ben Diesel. So um pretty much. I will say yeah, this, I was, uh whatever they do, they need to hear up and get it over with. Man, I don't think it's gonna end, man. Like uh did you hear um did you hear Ludacris on the auto smoke? No. Okay, so he was on auto smoke and he was like no, the question he's tired of this shit. Well, this is the thing. So he said what he's sick and tired of is people asking him why he keep doing Fast and the Furious movies. And he said why they keep making them. So he said, okay, he said, he said, I'm gonna answer this question so y'all can start asking me this dumbass question. He said the reason Fast and the Furious keep coming back. He said the bottom line is, he said that they're, he was like, they're giving us basically two Hundred million dollars, and he was like, Every time these movies hit, we making over 800 million. So he was like, The way that the, the you know, producers or whatever, how the way they see it, we're gonna make money, we're gonna triple our money on this, Absolutely. regardless of how Absolutely. bad the movie is or whatever. Absolutely. And he's like, Yo, he's like, We doing it for the money. He's like, So you're gonna keep seeing fast and furious movies because they make obvious. money. That is the most obvious thing he's ever said in life. Thank you, Captain Obvious, for real. Because, duh. Yeah, like if you gonna make eight hundred million, if you if you know it's a guarantee to make eight hundred million. This nigga flew a Pontiac GTO in space. <laughs> How is that possible? Where the fuck are you finding a Pontiac GTO to begin with? Yeah, okay. They got th- they have thrusters on in there. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, bro. These <laughs> niggas are finding Saturns and racing them. They don't even make Saturns no more, bro. Like. Come on, man. What are we talking about? How are they still making these movies, bro? I I I take I do one even better. A oh, podcast man. trivia. If you can, if anybody listening can tell me what the <laughs> fuck Fast and Furious is about from one to now, what it is about, what the whole premise is, then please, please, I can, please, I will do something for you. I, I can tell you what it is. I will do something for you. What do you think it is? Because I, I it's know you what know it, it is. It is. Come up with the most impossible no, mission. You wrong. You wrong. To, I'm telling you, dude, that's it's, it's I all about missions, already. man. No, I Googled this answer already. What is it? What is it? I can't say it because I want somebody to tell me. <laughs> I just want to know what people know. I tell you out there. I'm just, I'm just fact, saying, no, like, it. I'm gonna say it because if you're listening, then you can say it anyway. Who cares? Let me tell you what this movie is really about. This, the, the true purpose of Fast and Furious. Is about the government catching Dominic Toretto. That's all it's about. It ain't about car racing. It ain't about none of that. This whole thing is literally about the government catching Dominic Toretto for whatever he's done. I don't even know what crime he did at this point now. But he is all that's why he's always the focus because the government is always after him. Bet you didn't I mean, know that. Well, this is true. Well, they're not looking for him anymore, though, because um because The Rock gave him immunity or whatever for helping him Who solve these the fuck fucking crazy the ass. How is The Rock giving niggas immunity? That's, that's not even how that works. <laughs> <laughs> that's the 
what I'm talking about, bro. That's not even how that works. <laughs> Hey, I don't know what I don't know what part branch of the FBI or CIA hey, or whatever hey, he's a part of. Come on, bro. But he was able to get him. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. But no, but you answered the question because what I was gonna say, I was gonna say either Fast and the Furious or Mission Impossible. But you said uh, Fast and the Furious need to get the fuck out of here. Mission Impossible, I'm not so much mad at only because it's Tom Cruise can only do so much in these goddamn movies. And, and the shit that Tom Cruise does in these movies compared to the shit that they do in Fast and Furious, I believe Tom Cruise can do all that shit. <laughs> the shit that they do in Fast and Furious, my nigga, not believable at all. There's no way you telling me you got an engine strong enough and a goddamn hemi up Dodge Charger that's pulling out a motherfucking uh, 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 bank vault, my nigga, down a highway. Yeah, you don't get the fuck out Listen, of here, bro. No, yo, man. it's so funny because I just watched nine the other day, <laughs> <laughs> and like this dude, he look, he drove the car off of a cliff. Come on, found a way. To there was a, it the was a brick. Yeah, to catch it on the hook on the rim and, and it just swung him over. Perfectly <laughs> on the cliff, bro. Get the fuck out of here. Get out, man. I don't care how great you drive. That's impossible. You're not doing that. That's going to be a fucking crash, bro. Like, stop, man. Stop. What are we talking about, bro? These niggas, him and Brian drove a fucking bank vault on the highway with two souped up hemi charge Dodge, whatever they was. Stop, man. Oh, no, man. And they was that instinct was so driving so much so that the, they was able to sway the, the yeah, the not the not cars off the road and shit. <laughs> Yo, bro, that, that this is this wild, bro. alone would send both of them cars in the ocean. That's all. I'm <laughs> that, come on. Yo, and then they came up with a plan to get a dump truck, get that boat. Put the put that boat on the damn dump truck, and then they all bring a fake boat. All, <laughs> all in enough time to pass under a bridge. Come on, bro. What the fuck are we talking about, man? Oh Stop. my god, but hey. it. That's what I'm saying, bro. It's just it's just absurd shit happening it, in the <clears throat> universe. Hey, boy, you got my stomach hurting, but. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Oh my goodness, bro! Just oh my goodness! I don't yeah, know. man. I don't. Know. I feel you. I feel you, man. But you know, to, to but what Ludacris said, like you said, Captain Obvious. It's like if y'all gonna keep cutting me this check, I'm gonna keep coming back. Point hey, blank. He's the one that drove the, the GTO in space. Yeah, him and Tyrese. Man. All right. See, see. I bet you. I bet you he read the script. Was like. How much I get paid for this again? Yeah, <laughs> okay. Like, what are we doing with this? No, man. Nah, yeah. that's stupid, bro. I don't know, man. So, um, before we get up out of here, bro, um, what are some things that you are excited about for the second half of the year coming up, um, with the television and movie schedule? Hmm. Well, um, it's something that you mentioned briefly. Um, I am into the power universe. So we got Force that's supposed to be coming out. Um, mm -hmm. That's um, the one with uh, Tommy in it. So that second season is going to be coming out, I think, next month. Next month or the month after that. Let me see. Um, I'm looking forward to. <clears throat> oh, man, that's another show that's supposed to be coming out. And I will say this like, I, I've, I've inched over more into being more interested in the shows than movies mm -hmm. as of late. I don't know if it's my age or it's just the fact of like I really like to watch a story just continue. So I I I became a larger fan of like TV shows and shit like that. Um I'm trying to think of some movies. Um new Christopher Nolan joint. Um uh, uh, Op yeah yeah, yeah that I can't wait to see that. Yeah, um, that movie I sent you, the uh, um, uh, what is it called? I got John David Washington in it. Uh, the creation. Yes. Oh no, the creator. 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 
So uh, I'm looking forward to the creator. I'm looking forward to Evil Dead Rise to, to be on some type of streaming service. Man, so I can finally man, watch that. Shit, man. Yeah. So I mean, there's there's some things, uh, and there's also some things that's slipping my mind at the moment. Um, but those those are a few things that I'm definitely looking forward to. I will be watching um, just to see what's the what's the fuss about because I do believe that. Even though he dragged some shit out, Mark Scorsese is one of the, our great, oh, you absolutely, know, directors of our time. So, yeah. and then yeah. just to, to to have a movie, you know, what I'm saying, talking about, you know, what I'm saying, indigenous people and shit like that. Mm-hmm. You know, he's he's stepping away from that mob world. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm saying that he's usually in. So I, I'm um, and then like I say, same usual suspects. You know, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, Robert De Niro. So, yeah. But uh, what's some things you're looking forward to shows and and, and, t- um, and movies? Man, I'm looking forward to every DC and Marvel film coming out this year. Um, Blue Beetle is definitely going to be a good one. Um, they got another Aquaman dropping. Uh, the Marvels, I can't wait to see that shit. Um, I know that the Spider-Man movie is either about to come out or coming out soon. Um, so I'm super excited to see all of those. Um, Oppenheimer was the movie that I've been waiting for all year. Um, for those who are like, what the fuck is Oppenheimer? Oppenheimer is about the guy who built the, um, first atomic bomb. So I'm super excited to see that. Um, I wonder how they're going, you know what I'm saying, play everything out and, uh, how they're going, you know what I'm saying, make the this, this story look, especially with Christopher Nolan being the guy behind the, the camera and everything else like that. So that's <clears throat> something that I'm super looking forward to. Um, also, um, what else? What else? I had another, it was another movie, but I think it's already out. It's called Sisu or something like that. Or, yeah, it's like this dude. He's walking through um, his country or whatever, and like some Nazis pull up on him, and then like he's like an old war veteran or like a you know what I'm saying, but like he just like this badass black op war motherfucker, and then the Nazis pull up on him, they they take his little mule and shit, they take some shit from him, and like they about to kill him, and then he just like smoke everybody real quick, and then he just go on the fucking rampage and just like killing Nazis, and I'm like, yeah, I definitely want to see what that's like, so, you know what I'm saying, super excited to see that, um, I think it's already out, though, it might be out, you can either rent it or something like that already, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, definitely Oppenheimer is the one that I'm truly, truly, uh, that's the one where, when I seen the, um, when I seen the, uh, poster for it, I was, um, mm-hmm. I was super excited about it. However, even though I didn't, <laughs> I thought it was about the dude that made the big ass Zephyr, but it wasn't him. It was somebody else. At first, I was super, super geek because if anybody knows about the, um, damn, what the fuck is that shit called? Um, give me one minute. Man, while you looking that up, there is two movies that I just realized that I'm looking forward to. One of them already came out, but the Pope, uh, the Pope's Exorcist. Yeah, like I'm looking forward to seeing that. And then the yeah. other movie, uh, a new shot. What is it? Shyland Woodley movie? Uh, to Catch a Killer. I don't oh, know if you've seen the. Um, I don't know if you've seen the trailer for that, but that shit like it's gonna be all right too. Yeah, but um, I was talking about the Hindenburg disaster. So I thought, you know, what I'm saying. For everybody who knows, Titanic is one of my favorite movies. I thought that, you know what I'm saying, we was about to get the, the air version of the Titanic, which was um, the Hindenburg disaster. But unfortunately, uh, we we didn't, we haven't gotten that movie yet. Um, but Oppenheimer is definitely, um, it's, it's to me, I feel like with Christopher Nolan doing this one, it's going to be one of those movies that, is definitely going to be in the Oscar running. Um, mm-hmm. The Academy is definitely going to recognize this one. 
and uh, we'll see. We'll see how good it is. I want to see who plays Albert Einstein. That's what I'm super okay. excited to see, for sure. So yeah, that's all I got, man. Cool, cool, man. I think, right, I think man. this year gonna finish out to be a good one. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. We got a lot of, we still got a lot of stuff coming out, man. We got a lot of stuff popping. Um, if you guys enjoyed this episode, um, hit us up and let us know. If you didn't enjoy this episode, please hit us up and let us know. Um, this is our first ever behind. Oh, what's up, dude? We forgot all about uh Spider Man across the Spider Verse. No, that's what I was just talking about. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, that's the one I said I want to. I want to see. I definitely want to see that. Yeah. One. Yeah, I ain't forget about that for sure. That's oh, that's yeah. one of the ones I gotta go see. Um, even even though even though Doctor Umar Johnson killing it already, but hey man, you know. I expect him to. That's what that's that's what we need a movie <laughs> on that nigga. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga needs his own movie for sure. TV show or something. I I that was, was I would I would definitely buy any. Uh, I would make sure I sub- I'm subscribed to any uh, streaming service with his show on there. Absolutely. Um, we need like a Umar call-in show or something. I would definitely pay to uh, be on, be uh, attending that one. Um, but yeah, this is our first ever behind the scenes episode, man. Where we really just was, you know, kicking back and talking about some stuff we just, you know, what I'm saying wanted to go over with. Um, it wasn't no no real t- topics or nothing like that. Uh, maybe in the future we'll have something where we actually have a few topics and stuff to talk about. But for right now, um, this is just a peep of what you could you know what i'm saying uh get and it's of course always going to be more uh once we bring them back in the future so hopefully you guys liked it and if you didn't like i said that's cool too you guys can always hit us up on our socials um on instagram and twitter at view and nine pod on facebook va pod watch group on and we also have a community on twitter where you could uh join in and talk to the rest of the people in the community about movies and television that's a great place to get your spoilers off without actually getting your spoilers off you feel me so if you want to tweet out some spoilers or whatever feel free to join the community and get them out of there um and last but not least you can follow me on twitter at schools bronson i got a link share in my bio you can find me everywhere else there and um rest in peace to tina turner yes sir yes sir um y'all can check me out at uh, s.foster8 on instagram and on twitter at 28 minutes or less pod that is just on ig or check out the podcast new episode alert you know what i'm saying episode 125 um, I did an episode, uh, I, you know what I'm saying, my little gangster drug dealer episodes. You know what I'm saying? I did uh, Rafer Edmonds the Rafer third. Edmonds. Yeah, man. I had, had to get um, get one off on him, man. I also talk about the legendary coach, John Thompson. They had a run in in the D.C. area because he was, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. fucking with some of his players and shit. So the 16, John Thompson had to have a sit down with him. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so I get into that, man. He was a very interesting dude, man. Um, from the DC area. So, uh, go check out that episode. It's on all major platforms, and uh, that's all I got. That's what's up, man. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for listening, and much appreciative of you guys for watching as well. Um, you already know, man. Until the next episode, just like they say in Hollywood, that's a wrap. Cut.